Welcome to episode 21 of Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. By day, I co-host a morning radio show on a network in New York and Pennsylvania. By night, I'm a podcaster. Now, if you're a woman like me who loves Jesus and just wants to serve her family and community a little bit better, you're in the right place. When was the last time you dated your spouse? I know, pandemic, but TBH, we probably weren't that great at dating before COVID. Thanks to time, budget, distractions, but connecting with your husband is super important. So we've got help, and it's called Jay and Laura LaFoon. You might have seen them online or at one of their Ultimate Date Night events, but now they have a book of 52 amazing dates for busy couples. One of the dates is called Garage Sale. Both partners start with a dollar and each get to pick two garage sales to stop at. So you can spend your whole dollar at one sale or break it up, spending a little bit here and there over all four sales. Of course, negotiating is totally okay. And at the end, you judge your treasures. Whoever got the best haul gets to pick where you go for lunch. Over lunch, talk about the memories you treasure in your relationship. Another date is all about dinner, but instead of going out, you splurge on really good ingredients at the grocery store and cook at home. The goal is to do something together and enjoy the fruits of your labor. And it's funny because this book wasn't written for these times, but a lot of the ideas work right now. We do have a lot of dates in there that are pandemic friendly. Um, and we didn't plan it that way because we actually wrote this book and and we finished it up in the, the mid, fall of twenty nineteen in the in the mid of, of twenty nineteen before even rumors of the pandemic were coming. Um, but uh, we just wanted to find creative dates. One of the things that that happens, and of course you guys have been a part of this, when we would do our ultimate date nights, sometimes we would do a VIP meet and greet. And one of the questions we would ask couples is, you know, what do you guys do for a date? And it was always dinner and a movie, dinner and a movie. We're creative people. Let's think of stuff that's not dinner and a movie. And so we came up with some stuff that you do outdoors, um, some stuff that you do in your driveway, <laughs> and, you know, just some some crazy stuff that, um, you know, can be done uh, in this current environment. You can definitely know that the spring cleaning date is mine. I don't know how else you would be able to tell the rest of them, but mine is the, mine's definitely the spring cleaning date. And we, we always get asked about that. Why? How do you make spring cleaning a date? Well, it really can be fun. You just take one room at a time do and together. you do it together that way. When you throw something of the other ones out, you don't get blamed for it afterwards. Uh Everybody goes getting put aside and you can make it fun. You turn on music and take a break and have snacks. And, you know, it just so that one you can tell is definitely mine. I don't know how to even tell the other. And at the end of the day, you order a pizza (laughs) and it's a date. So I think my favorite just flipping through is the car wash kissing because... (laughs) I, f- I feel like we really get, we, we kind of make dating like this busy, like, oh, we'll go do this thing, do this thing. And we, we don't often take time for intimacy in our marriage, which is really important. Exactly. It is. Now, the car wash kissing, kissing is a fun one. Anything that has to do with kissing is going to be Jay's new. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the problem with the car wash kissing, when we, when we tried it, is that big console that's in the middle between the two <laughs> in the, two, in the car. <laughs> We're, we're not young and spry enough to get around that. <laughs> but we did have somebody last week tell us that, yes, they've done the same thing in a car wash. Yep. <laughs> you know, you say, okay, then this leads to something else. I mean, that's the goal. Like, you hope the car wash isn't the end of the day, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> there better be dinner after you kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of joke about stuff, but really, like, as Christians, dating is supposed to be like, Wah, 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 right? I mean, this is this is supposed to be all good, healthy stuff for your marriage. Why do we like kind of put it in the box of oh, we can't we can't talk about intimacy or you know kissing or things like that because for some reason that that's like a bad thing. You know, it's funny because um, there's only one subject that God devoted an entire book of the Bible to, and that was the Song of Solomon, and that's intimacy between a husband and a wife. And yet we shy away from it. Well, God devoted an entire book in the Bible to it. There's not a book on money. There's not a book on, you know, family life or raising kids, but there's an entire book on intimacy between a husband and a wife. And so it it really does drive us crazy that in, you know, I think it's because our culture has made intimacy something that is um, dirty, dirty and just out front, everything in front of you, you know, and, and so as Christians, we go, oh, well, if culture is saying this is dirty, then we need to make it dirty. I mean, 
it, how many of us told our kids that this is something beautiful and it should be something that you enjoy between just your husband? You know, we hope as Christians we've done that, but so 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 often we shy away from talking about it, even with our children, as far as grooming them for when they get married. And I think it's because culture has has portrayed it as something filthy and dirty. And as Christians, we need to take that back and say, no, this is something beautiful between a husband and wife that God created for us to enjoy. It's interesting. We were doing a date night in a, a rural town in Ohio, and um, this this older gentleman, I mean, he had to be in his 80s. He came up to me and he said, now you need to tell these young folks what you did to get your spouse is what you need to do to keep your spouse. And clearly dating and intimacy are, are, are part of that equation. You know, we were hot to trot and, and you got to keep that flame alive. That's all there is to it. I love that you also have dates that are outwardly focused. You know, there's a, a few in here about uh, donating to charity or serving at, uh, you know, at a food pantry or something like that. How should Christian dating be different in focus? I mean, because I look at things like that and I say, okay, that's something where I feel like Jesus would say, yes, use your time together, serve other people. That's good and healthy, too. Exactly. I think it draws you together as a, as a couple when you're serving together. We did a um, soup kitchen. Um, in a town just north of us and we did it, it was Thanksgiving time and it, it really, it brings you together closer as a couple. It helps you see what you have that other people don't have. Um, it, it brings perspective to life. It brings perspective to your marriage, to your relationship. Um, when you go and serve other people in ways, if, especially those who are underserved or who are in poverty or poor and don't have all the things that you have. And so often we get bogged down in our day-to-day -day life and we think, you know, this person that I'm walking through life with is really annoying me. And, you know, <laughs> that's true. But when you can put the perspective, when you go and serve others, you really see that perspective that, you know what, my problems are really just minor little, you know, nicks in, in the ground. I think one of the reasons we wrote the book was because dating can hold many different purposes in your relationship from, you know, um, maybe, talking about your finances, talking about your family, talking about your future, dreaming about your future, dreaming about your next vacation. You know, if, if you had, if you go into a date with a, an idea of what the purpose is, and certainly serving is, is a great purpose, then you, it's a richer experience. You go in with something intentional in mind, you have a richer experience because of it. So let's say there's a couple who has not been dating. And uh, it's pretty safe to assume that their marriage is probably in kind of a not so intimate place. How do you start? I mean, you don't want to come out of the gate with some big grandiose date that is going to just set all kinds of expectations. I mean, how do we just start? What are some basics for like, hey, here's how you have a date? I think every couple goes through seasons. And, you know, whether it's uh, age or medication or illness or injury where we've gotten out of the habit of dating. Um, maybe just life has been too hard. Um, I would say start with something simple, like do a picnic in the park or go get ice cream. Like you said, don't make it some big grandiose thing. Just start simple and small and, and work your way up. Um, and again, you know, let's go get ice cream. It doesn't have to necessarily um, lead to great romance, but it can lead to some communication that can lead to great romance. Well, and something simple, especially during these, this time in our, in our world, during this pandemic, depending on, you know, what state you live in, we live in Michigan and we're pretty locked down. And, you know, so something simple you could do for a date is just set aside a two hour window on an evening and say, you know what, we're going to watch this movie on Netflix or Hulu, um, you know, because you can't go out, you can't go to a restaurant, you can't do anything. But you know what, you could also just go for a walk that's just the two of you where you don't take your phones with you. You can think creatively and it doesn't have to be like you said, some grandiose. That's why we wrote the book and we put the code in there too. We put a code in with each date that says, this is going to take a lot of effort or not a lot of effort, a lot of money or not a lot of money. It's going to create a lot of romance or not a lot of romance. So you could just kind of open the book and stick your finger on a page and go, this is the one we're going to do tonight. <laughs> right. A lot of times someone in, in the in the relationship is not comfortable initiating the, the conversation. And, and so, you know, whether it's a the, the man or the woman who wants to go on a date, but just doesn't know how to get it started. Uh, a very simple thought is to say, hey, honey, I've got an idea. Really, what's your idea? Why don't we go get some ice cream? Okay, you know, I mean, that's the kind of who thing. Who doesn't like ice cream? Oh, right, 
<laughs> or, you know, or a cup of coffee, you know, whatever it is that you like, to just say, hey, I've got an idea. And to bounce that idea off of your spouse instead of saying, why don't you take me on a date? Why don't we date anymore? Why don't you ever want to go on a date? That usage of verbiage is really not helpful. <laughs> and, and it can come from either the husband or the wife. Um, Cause we know a lot of um, spouses who it's a money thing. They don't want to spend the money. Well, you're either going to spend the money on a date and investing in your relationship, or you're going to spend it on the backside um, in and marital therapy counseling. Or divorce, yeah. Now the two of you right now, as we're speaking are uh, kind of on a huge date in Miami and my husband and I love to go away together. Is that like a must do? I mean, especially when we talk about things like finances, because a lot of times people will be like, oh, you guys are going away again, but that's just kind of how we roll. Yes, absolutely. We are huge proponents of getting away and we encourage couples to do that at least twice a year. And it doesn't have to be a week long like we are. It could be just an overnight to a hotel and it could be local. Or you know what, if your camper's, you know, an overnight in your tent somewhere, we, we're we too old to lay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I'm too young to lay on the ground. <laughs> right? so, you know, but just, yes, we're huge proponents of, you know, somebody, again, we get all the excuses, but I have children. So, so share, uh, weekends with a, another couple that has kids and they take your kids this weekend, you take theirs another weekend. Um, but yes, there's something about getting away for us. It, it continues to spark our creativity. We have time to just without the regular pressures of being at home and the work that we have to do. And we, we get into a different routine and it allows us to be more creative. We talk a lot more about our family and our dreams for the future. And, you know, what do we want to do next year on vacation? That's always um, a one that we, we always start looking at places where we are and go, okay, so how about we go this place next year? And um, our, our phrase for the, for getting away is get away and get ahead. It's why kids going to camp is so important. They're away from their norm. They're away from that routine. And it kind of jolts you in a very positive way to thinking ahead, to thinking about it. And, and the other thing that we tell people, um, you know, we don't have a lake house. We don't have, you know, snow, snowmobiles or motorcycles or any toys. Our recreation is to get away. And again, if you think about um, spending money getting away as opposed to therapy, a therapist is a hundred bucks a, a shot. You do that once a week for a year, that's five grand, okay? So don't talk to me about money. I don't want to spend five grand talking to a therapist about our problems. I'd rather spend money getting away and we getting also, ahead. We also delegate. We we mm-hmm. have a savings account. We have a checking account. But then we have a, well, it was called an Italy fund because we were going to go to Italy for our 25th. And we'll be married 37 years this year. So we haven't made it there yet. Um, but we have that fund that we put a little bit of money in every month that allows us to be able to travel and to do, you know, to go somewhere for a week. And, you know, so doing those kinds of things, planning ahead, setting aside a, a an account so that you have some money, even if it's just 25 bucks a week or whatever you put into it, it'll accumulate enough for you to go to a local hotel somewhere and just enjoy some time. I think if you just get like some pasta in Miami, that's like the same. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you've enjoyed this episode of Therese Talk, be sure to subscribe and look for the next episode on Tuesday. If you really loved it, consider making a gift to Family Life, the ministry this podcast is a part of. Just go to familylife.org and find out more about what we do. Did you know Family Life offers a variety of podcasts? Get up to date with Family Life news or enjoy some family time with Family Life Kids. There's, if that makes sense, a Family Life original podcast where they talk about what life is really like as a Christian in your 20s. And 10 Minutes With, an interview program with faith-based artists and speakers. They're all free and on demand. Just look for podcasts under the radio tab at familylife.org.